ahead of Small Business Saturday. Jeffrey Brown takes a look now at the plight of independent bookstores struggling to stay afloat in a challenging economy. It's part of our ongoing arts and culture series, Canvas. Another day in the life of an independent bookstore in the time of pandemic. Packing orders, customers at the curb, and on this day, a few allowed inside, and constant phone calls. Okay, just give me your name and number. Sometimes their first question is, are you open? And we say, well, sort of, kind of, maybe, what can we do for you? <laughs> in fact, Source Booksellers in Detroit's Midtown is open, just not in the way it used to be. It's a tiny store, 900 square feet, owned and operated by 83-year-old Janet Webster Jones and her daughter, Allison Jones Taylor. Janet had worked in the Detroit Public Schools as teacher and administrator for 40 years. Beginning in 1989, she built on her love of books, first selling them at local bazaars, fairs, and churches, later as part of a women's business collective, finally opening the store here in 2013. It's a highly curated selection, mostly nonfiction. History, health, books by and about women, art, things they love and want to share with customers. You're your own algorithm in a way. You got that right. <laughs> we try, I mean, hope that our um, books, even if it's a storybook or a fiction book, it gives a history and a story that you may not get otherwise. I think that's gonna be it. This was a place all about personal interaction until March when the store was closed and business disrupted. Out of necessity, mother and daughter changed it up. We did not have a website where you could buy things before. And so this is absolutely new. Mm -hmm. And we had to learn all of the shipping and receiving, all these um, packaging, packaging <laughs> different things that we were not doing before. By going online, they found a wider audience with sales as far as Maine, Washington State, and abroad. They also went old school, taking to the phones to reach individual customers. As a black-owned business, they saw the heightened interest in social justice issues translate into new relationships with businesses seeking large orders of books for their employees. And it continues to evolve. Many times people come in and talk about uh, uh, having a business, and they tell me that I dreamed this, and I say, I did not dream this. Opportunity and courage put this business together over a period of time. But opportunity and courage at any time is is required. What what about yeah. with the pandemic? Well, with the pandemic, the opportunity came for us to shut down and change. And we had the courage to just shift. And the possibility, because we had grown in our capacity to do things in the store. These are perilous times for independent bookstores. According to a recent study by the American Booksellers Association, more than one indie has closed each week since the pandemic began. And 20% across the country are in danger of closing. Renowned stores like Strand in New York and Vromans in Los Angeles have said their survival is at stake. Everywhere, once popular author appearances and book club gatherings are virtual and many stores continue to do curbside-only business. A lot depends on your community and how much they appreciate you. At 43-year-old Watermark Books in Wichita, the cafe is closed, but the store itself is open to customers. It's about Dolly Parton's feminism. Owner Sarah Bagby had to lay off employees and shorten store hours. But a move to online sales has helped make up for other losses. Bagby, who bought the store in 1996, has been in this business long enough to survive past crises and sees this one as again forcing stores like hers to focus on their core business. It's funny, when the box stores opened, typically independent stores became better business people or they closed. Now with this pandemic, we are better business people again. We've limited our time open. We have taken away the fat that wasn't generating revenue, and we are just selling books. And they're part of a new effort to take on the elephant in any room full of books, Amazon. The fact is, book sales have risen during the pandemic. People are home reading more, teaching their children. But it's Amazon that's benefited most. A campaign called Boxed Out was launched by the ABA at several stores around the country, including Watermark. 
our messaging is just think about where you're shopping. If you love your local businesses, you really have to support them with your money. You can't just love them and think everybody else is taking care of them. Source Booksellers in Detroit is also part of the campaign. And mother and daughter are hyper-conscious of the local role they play in a community that has continued to support them, whether through small development grants or through checks from loyal individuals. Human beings need relationships on every level of their lives. And so that's why we were very dedicated to having a bookstore that would foster relationships. Mm -hmm. I have people coming in the store, oftentimes I think, anybody else? Mm -hmm. uh, saying, uh, I know I can get this from, I won't say the word, but I wanted to buy it from you. And we're very grateful for that. But is it sustainable? In this industry, some books can make a big difference. Independent bookstores are counting on Barack Obama's memoir to kick off a holiday season that could make or break many. As COVID cases again explode, stores that are open face new closures. And every small business owner shivers as the cold weather sets in. We don't know how sustainable anything is. We don't even know. And I'll say this as an old person. We don't even know if our life is sustainable. <laughs> so we have to live on the faith and the hope and the purpose of serving the community as best we can, of responding to the needs that come to us because of outside forces, being clear with our own DNA, what we have decided is our offering to the community, and going forward. That's the best we can do. Read a good book lately? Bought a good book lately? If you're lucky, you might find one just down the street. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown.